includes free cash back checking. Visit aplusfcu.org for more information. Our anchor sponsor is St. David's. Our founding sponsor is Golden Check. Our premier sponsor is Fruitville Chamber of Commerce.
think that might have been the uh, the quarterback who coach man told us they were going to rotate in Leland Smith. The junior, they said that he's more of like a wildcat quarterback. When they need a change of pace, they're going to get Leland in there. It looks like a two-point conversion. Leland has it in his hands again. And We got it right, Luke. We got it. We got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. We got the name right of the scoreboard operator and the score right after that two point conversion. It is 15 to 7. About to be the best on the seven days. Shane Hudson on the sideline. I wonder if Shane said, watch out for the best player on the company. I'll tell you, when 
I saw that ball leave his hand, I said, uh-oh, there's too much air under that one. I thought the DB uh, was going to be able to make it there in time, but no, well, that was not the case. Uh, the ball kind of floated in the air, and eventually I think Jacob Carruthers, the defensive end, got over there and forced the receiver out. You wonder if Rouse's DBs are going to play a little tighter coverage from here on out, or if they're just going to give up these short passes. Sideline. I think everybody, including us, thought he was just going to step out of bounds. It's okay for us to think that. It's not okay for the defenders to think that he'll come out of bounds next time. What the hell are they They didn't. You know what that was? Okay. <laughs> that was made by number 48, Preston Welton. That's game of six yards. <laughs> Start to finish. We are really testing this ask and you shall receive thing, huh? Third down and four from the 41. 412 to go here in the opening half. Raiders leading 15 to 7. We've got movement. There's another flag. Yeah, that was tough. You know, the defense was posturing, looking like they were going to come up on a blitz. That's okay. I've been down. 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 I've section for this year's gift. All by the way. Nothing wrong with this. It's almost half time. Have you decided what to do? The concession stands are open. And for Yeah, 
Delta's undefeated on the year 5-0, and last year they finished district play undefeated as well. I've heard it's 6-0, so, you know, until you not lost the chance, Expect that kind of mistake from a uh, guy who's been in the program for a while, for a while but mistakes are mistakes. We all make them. And you know what? They're going to kick it off very deep, so all it takes is a great defensive effort. You get a three and out here, and you're all going to get a three and out here. There are a lot of boots in Fifteen to seven. It'll be second down and seven from the twenty yard line. London, shotgun, trips right. Hands it off again to Cannon. Cannon finds a hole, sprints across the 30, 40, pushed out of bounds around the 45 yard line. Another flag. Great run by. Justin Cannon, his last name, very fitting. Yes. Shout out to one. Yes, he was. Hey, we have to give a shout out to Rouse Receiver, Junior Receiver, Noah Fiddler. Noah had a great block on the outside. You know, DN for uh, Connolly was unable to set the edge there. And so the next person whose job that is is going to be the corner in a formation like that. And the corner can't do that appropriately if he's getting blocked like he was by Noah. So that play could have gone for about a four or five yard game, but instead it broke because of Noah's block. It's coming back for a completely different reason. Ah, just a lot of good runs. 
All for naught, Jeff. All for naught. You know who loves that? Is a defense. I don't know if I breathed a bigger <laughs> sigh of relief in my life than when I've been a defender who ran myself out of a play, gave up a big play, and that big play didn't count. Here's Wynn looking for Cannon in motion. He gets smothered. Oh my. Dear, oh dear. Janus Bell bringing London's Bell in the backfield. And you know, he's the guy who Coach Murden said, when I need a playmate in the backfield, watch out for Jay Bell. He's a junior, so expect him to make some even bigger plays next year. He says, hey, I might be a little young, but I am here. Jay Bell making a play. A big play. Oh, fire it up, too. Big defensive stop in the backfield. Second down and 18 now for the 23. London hands it off. Brought down quickly by Bell. Cannon didn't get much there. Clock continues to tick. 2.15 left in the opening half. Rouse leading Connolly 15-7. Rouse has won six straight against the Cougars. The only win for Connolly in this series came back in 2016 when they beat the Raiders 20-19. Third down at 17 from the 24. Third and 17. Watch out for James Bale on this play as well. Number 17. He's lined up as the uh, defensive end, kind of at the bottom of the screen right now. Ran right into a double team, but he freed up 55. Play action, London. And Rolling Rookies. right, showing off the legs. Able to create some space with some shifty moves, but gets pushed out around the 35. Jadis Bale there to push him out along with safety Lawrence Doe. Now, if that name sounds familiar and you are a just a high school sports fan, not a high school football fan in particular, you might remember Lawrence Doe was a key player on the Connolly soccer team that advanced several rounds in the state tournament last year. A star on the soccer field and not too bad at this kind of football either. Love those multi-sport athletes. Talking with all these head coaches, Jeff, this season. None of them say that they want their kids just sticking to one sport. Mm -hmm. They want to see the kids that have that competitive edge that want to play as many sports as they possibly can within their schedule. Yep, and see, that was me when I was younger, but I want to point out a key word in that sentence. I wanted to play all the sports, uh, got cut from the basketball team, didn't have the hand-eye coordination for baseball, too slow to really contribute in track, but I, I was a high-effort guy. You're, you're, looking, you're looking, you're listening to two high-effort guys. I was cut from my baseball team junior year, made the team my senior year, hit a home run in my first at bat, and then got wow. to high five the head coach round third. Oh, a little extra oomph in that high five. A little motivation. And no one sets a better screen or rebounds better than me in basketball, Jim. Okay, okay. Trips right for Rouse. Handoff goes back to Cannon. Cannon, he is so shifty, Jeff. That's the word, shiftiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Inside, outside, just so good at cutting downfield gets nearly back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, defense is all about angles, and Cannon just eliminates those angles, so you really have to be sure to gang tackle him, because chances are if you feel like you have an angle on him, he's going to put you at a disadvantage very quickly, and those disadvantages are easier to overcome when there are three or four of you instead of just one or two of you. So it's fourth down and 18 from the 23. Rouse is punting. No surprise there. Rouse has that lead, 15 to 7. They're punting with 30, 29, 28, 27 seconds left. Looks like they're going to call the timeout. Take us, take us down to zero, Jeff. 22. Well, they took us down to zero on the play clock, so they get a timeout called right before that. Of course, they want Con Con Connolly. That's the name of the school. They want Connolly to get the ball back with as little time remaining on the clock as possible. And uh, well, they've executed that about as well as you could. 22 seconds left when they'll punt this ball. I'll tell you what, Jeff, this first half has been a breeze. Mm. <laughs> it's gone by pretty quickly. Where's the time gone? I feel like I just started. <laughs> Those winds are a little heavy for my liking. If you're just joining us, we pretty much missed the whole first quarter and a good portion of the second quarter because of the technical difficulty with our audio. But we have figured it out. We battled. We put our heads down and came to a conclusion that we had a technical piece of equipment that just did not want to work. Technically? What? Hey, that's out of our control. We, we, we controlled what we were able to control. 
much like Rouse plans to do here on this punt. Caden Heitzman, linebacker, but also acts as the punter. He's got a big leg and he boots it. A little knuckleball across midfield. And it bounces inside the 35. Touchdown around the 33 yard line with nine, eight seconds left on the clock. So, Jeff, you're down eight. You're Connolly. Do you try to do something Hail Mary-esque downfield, or do you just say, hey, let's go to the locker room as is? You know, I see zero timeouts left, so your options really are, are we going to run something safe and, and imagine that we're going to go into the locker room, something screen or draw a light, or are we going to take a deep shot? I like to roll the dice, so I would take a deep shot here. In my perfect world, there would be a timeout left, and so I'd run something, something kind of safe, like a quick slam, get down, buy me 10 yards, timeout, and then go deep. But we'll see what they do. See if Coach Jeff Jones makes I don't the know right that, call. I don't know that they're going to gamble like I would, but I would. Here we go. Win. Firing. And out around the 50-yard line That's for the Connolly the offense. Aiden Spark, and that's halftime. At the half, Raiders 15, Cougars 7. We appreciate you sticking with us here through the technical difficulties of this opening half here on KVU Plus and the KVU YouTube channel. We've got the bands, the halftime show. You'll be able to listen to it in full coming up next, and we'll see you on the other side. School District and the Fine Arts Department at Rouse High School are proud to introduce to you the Rouse Royals and the Royal Band, Rouse Band. The Rouse Royal Officers are Second Lieutenant Emma Alcure, First Lieutenant Michaela Merritt, Second Lieutenant Maddie Krause, and Captain Lexi Nielsen. Social Officers are Social Company Brianna Fuentes and Hannah Bolton. Social Vice President Beth Marriott and Social President Kenzie Brown. Royal of the Week is Gabby Proa and Spirit Girl of the Week is Emma Shoney. The Royals will now perform a palm routine to shake it off.
Hispanics of the Week are Emma Logan and Caleb Coe. Brass students of the Week are Carson Frank and Huck Layport. Percussion student of the Week is Kennedy Landers. The East student of the Week is Corbin Harden. Secondary student of the Week is Thane McDaniel. Thank you for always defining excellence through the Rouse Band way every day. Tonight, for your entertainment, the Rouse Band is proud to present their 2023 production, Requiem. Featuring the music of Mozart, Cristobal Tapia de Beer, and Regina Spector. Under the field leadership of drum majors Emerson Scott, Ashtier, Abraham Lee, and Sophie Summers, your Rouse High School Marching Band.
The ref marching band director is Caitlin Wolf, with assistance from Anna Bush and Ryan Johnson. Percussion director is James Farley, with assistance from Emily DeRocher, Connor Nolan, and Justice Moss. Visual ensemble director is Anthony Mondragon, and dance department director is Amy McKee. Band field staff members are Matt Oliveira, Alex Smith, Thomas Schaefer, and Alex Gonzalez. Ryan Johnstone is the director of bands. Tonight's halftime performance is proudly brought to you by our 2324 sponsors. Bliss Salon by Vicky, Next Level Urgent Care, Grand Donuts, Gideon Math and Reading Center, Derek's Barbershop, Adventure Kids Play Care, Donna Beard Photography, Redhorn Brewery, Conceptual Design, ATX Sales Group, Terry McDaniel and Company, Kimberly Wolf and Wolf Real Estate, Perch Dentistry, Cool Atmospheres, Heating and Air, J4 Commercial Services, Mercy Veterinary Hospital and Pet Resort, and Integrity Nail Barn Leander. We appreciate your continued support of the Rouse Band. Star of the week is Daniela Reyes. The star dancer of the week and social officer is Alondra Marcial. Your 2023-2024 star dance officers are Lieutenant Isabella Alba Broki and Lieutenant Lila Atlas. Halftime Entertainment, the stars will be performing in field, jazz kit, routine two, good for you.
Mike has not. Yeah, if you saw it, 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 yeah. Manual, I don't know why I haven't noticed. Yeah, you could, you're probably using the rear mic. You know, so so this does. The rear mic, it, that, that actually manually changes that. So on manual, this doesn't manually do shit. No. no okay. uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. And then this on manual. That, I mean, if this is put, this works. Yeah. So if that was plugged in in the back, that always works for me. But whatever that mic, I could never angle it. Yeah. <laughs>
That's a lot of experience, but he told us earlier in the week, he said, quote, we still got lots of room to grow. We've seen that growth internally throughout the course of this ball game so far. He also told us, quote, I'm a very boring person. Jeff, I don't believe that for a second. Not at all. He's hilarious. He's one of the funnier coaches we've had a chance of meeting with. Um, and so you know he's, he's just underselling himself a little bit. And then if you look at Rouse, what Coach Mann has been able to do, you go through their last few seasons, 2020-2021, undefeated in district play, 10-2 season, 2021-2022, undefeated in district play, 11-2 season. Then last year they were 4-2 in district play, just 6-6 six six on the season. So going into this season, he said that the theme this year is your brothers keep mm -hmm. from the Cain and Abel school from the Bible, that idea to just be there for one another, and I think we've seen that through their first four games where they've won three and only lost one. Yeah, yeah, you love that, that, that motto, the mantra for the team this year, my brother's keeper, is not something that the coaches fed uh, the team. It was actually one of their offensive linemen, I want to get his name right, it's Ty Wierarski senior right tackle who is also the long snapper, he came to Coach Mann in the offseason and said, Coach, during my daily devotions, this is a part of the scripture that I keep on coming back to, and it's something I think that I should share with the team in a meaningful way. And so they talked about it as a team, and, and now that's the team's not really, really cool that one of their senior leaders spearheaded that process. I always love when leadership is shown at a young age. First down and 10, hand off to Cannon, gets a few yards. Justin Cannon again with the Browns trying to extend their lead. They were up 15 to 7, then just moments ago, Mark Cougars right back there in this ball game. Melvin McPherson. With a touchdown, a really nice pass play, Landon Bradley on the receiving end from Caden Wayne. The Raiders, second down and 7 from the 38 yard line. Hand off again to Cannon. Cannon just has that burst, mm -hmm. and he found it there across the 45, around the 46-yard line. That moves the chains. First down for the Raiders. 8:32 left here in the third quarter. Just again, one of the more fun players to watch in town. He's been that way for years. He contributed on this team since his sophomore season, and now he's the guy, senior leader on this team. Trying to tackle, keeping the feet moving. Oh man, Alejandro Miranda Castellan had a chance to bring Cannon down to the backfield. Cannon said, uh-uh, mm -hmm. not doing that. Not on Jeff Jones' birthday. Oh. That's my gift to Jeff. I appreciate that. You know, I did turn 35, so a 10-yard run, it feels like a 35-yard run would be maybe a little more appropriate. Hey, who knows? Hey, we've got some time left. First down and 10 from the 45. Back to Cannon, he gets ripped down. Also, Tyler, I like my gifts to come with the car. <laughs> so, Jada Spell, was that Jada Spell back there? It was. Usman Jabate there as well, they call him OJ. Second down and nine for the 44. Two receivers top of the screen, two receivers bottom of the screen. Movement on the defensive line. Morgan London, a little audible, play action, has to escape the pocket, he does, just fires, well, heavy pressure from the Cougars. London did all he could just to get that ball away and avoid the sack. You know, right before that play snapped, I saw Coach, uh, uh, Coach Burton on the Pflugerville Connolly sideline sprint down the sideline and adjust his defense right before the snap. It looked like everybody was on the same page there, uh, so it looked like he adjusted the defense to bring number seven, that outside linebacker by uh, Alvaro Ruiz off the edge, and that forced the quarterback to speed everything up. So a great adjustment from the sideline just in time. Third down and nine from the 44. London fires, caught. How about that? Keller Rogers, first down Raiders. So Cougars, impressive drive to start the second half. And now here come the Raiders with one of their own. You know, Keller Rogers, a guy they call Rocket, just looked athletic on that play. Sometimes a guy will catch the ball and 
you can tell by the way they fall, the way they move when they don't plan to move that way. If you're an athlete or not, that guy moved the right way. First down at 10 for the 31. London rolls right, connects with Rodgers again, and Mr. Rodgers making it his neighborhood. Another first down for the Raiders. Big Mr. Rogers fan now. Raised in Pittsburgh, shot the show in Pittsburgh, so myself being Pittsburgh, born and raised. Big Mr. Rogers. All right. A little history. A little city of Pittsburgh history. Can it? Continues to make history on the ground tonight. Little by little. Six, seven yard gain there inside the 15. Red zone time for the Raiders. Second down and three, Cannon receives the rock. Dives forward, another first down. So, Conley, I'm not saying they look tired, but certainly the Raiders are having their way on this drive, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, gashing them. And when I say gashing them, you, sometimes you think about those big explosive runs, you know, 17 yards here, 14 there. But honestly, if you're getting six yards a carry, like, that's huge. That's two plays away from a first down every single snap. And that's exactly what we're seeing from the Ravens in this drop. Cannon, does he dive in? Yes, sir. They say he's short. Looks like a knee hit down right before he got across the goal line. Oh, are they taking him out? Cannon. Oh, coach. Turn the score, coach. There we go. Let, let Cannon get his name in the paper. Oh, major move, the ball falls loose. Flags are down. She plays the trophy. Maybe let him get a few more yards in that uh, as well. <laughs> Our favorite ice cream is Rocky Rock. Penalties. Significant storyline in that first half. The way this game started, it started slow for us up here in the broadcast booth. I think it started slowly down on the field for both Rouse and Conley. Yeah, we've seen quite a few pre-snap penalties, and that's not really common in week six. By now, you think you've kind of gotten in the rhythm of things, especially with something like jumping off sides on offense. As an old lineman, as a, as a back or receiver, you should be used to your quarterback's cadence. You should be really tuned in to is this one on one, on two, on three. This many pre snap penalties should happen right now. Second down and six from the six. How about that? All the way in. Leland Smith. That same option. Quarterback keeper. Touchdown Rouse. It's a seven-point lead for the Raiders. Yeah, and what I like is that big confrontation that happened at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. <laughs> and that just shows you, like, hey, were you squatting in the offseason or were you sleeping in the offseason? That's when you find out. It's week six at the one-yard line. If you want to push a man this way, he wants to go the other way. Who's going to win on that play? The Browns offensive line. Huh? Smith may have been squatting while he was sleep squats. Yeah, very popular with fitness community. Justin Tatum, the senior, through the uprights. It is 22 to 14. Raiders extend their lead here with 5:28 to go in the third quarter. You are streaming live. Game use Friday football fever on Thursday on either KU Plus or our KU YouTube channel. Tyler Feldman, Jeff Jones, Corey Bowes, Yohan Castro. So glad you're with us here tonight. Beautiful evening in Pflugerville at the field. Cougars, can they stage a comeback? They stayed in this ball game, still looking for their first district win of the season. So are the Raiders, though. Raiders, however, played in their first district game this year, whereas the Cougars last week lost their district opener to Elgin on the road 50 to 28. 8.56 the time again at 10 o'clock. Go from streaming this to either streaming KVU News at 10 or turning on your TV and watching KVU News at 10. You'll get the highlights, some of the stuff, some of the highlights you missed from this ball game in the opening parts. Because of our technical difficulties, just 
want to remind everyone, if you're just joining us, that we did work through things. We are built tough at Cajun. Kickoff caught around the 15-yard line. Finally strangled by the Rouse special teams. Number 26 there on the tackle, Reed Henson. Decent yardage, decent field position, thanks to Owen Garcia on the receiving end of that kickoff. Jeff, if you're the Cougars, mm -hmm. you just try to keep doing what you did in that last drive, right? Yeah, that drive that they opened the half with was very nice. We've seen them have success uh, on the ground and through the air. I expect to see some balance on this drive, and Jamal Abercrombie is probably the best player on offense. I think he should get the ball early and on. And he does get the ball. Hits a wall, though. Behind the line, Tyler Evans. Great first name with the stop in the backfield. She's a senior. Not much room for Abercrombie to run there. The senior, he's really dominated. He's getting a lot of those offensive touches. Almost 100 touches this season, almost 800 yards. Averaging more than two yards per carry, 10.2 yards per carry, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I was about to say, you know, two yards a carry is not that good, but yeah, over 10 yards a carry, very impressive. Yeah. Second down and 11 for the 33, a little pitch to Garcia. Garcia kind of tilts his body sideways to squeeze yep. through that second line. Gets across the 40 yard line. Yeah, very shifty. Uh, it was great to see him in the open field there. He was able to get six or seven yards with all that congestion. Imagine what he can do if he's just facing DBs and he has even more of a field to work with. I think he get the ball in his hands. We saw at the end of that play, he kind of rolled up on a big offensive lineman at 76, Aiden Newby. Newby, he's six foot eight, 280 pounds. He turns to be one interest for that. Third down and three from the 41. Wynn puts Abercrombie on his right hip. Wynn keeps it himself, follows his blockers, gets dragged down by Jacob Dodson. Looks like it's enough for the first down. There go the chains. So Wynn keeps it himself, and that's a big win for this Cougars offense. We talked earlier in the broadcast about how defense is really all about angles. We saw Wynn kind of exploit that on that play. He shifted his body right before contact to put the defender at a, uh, a, a disadvantage on the angle. So the defender was not able to hit rapid drive speed because the defender's feet stopped. When Kate Wynn's feet stopped, he was able to jump forward. That got him about two yards. I think that made a difference in third short and first and ten. First and ten, Wynn goes left side, oh. finds his guy, Gael Paez Vera. Man, speaking of a defender, and Wynn and moving his feet, Adrian Akbasova. Wow, that was impressive. Biggest hit of the game, honestly, probably the, one of the biggest hits we've seen on these Thursday night broadcasts so far this season. I was very impressed by that. Yeah, taking a look. Oh, yeah, great play by him. The sophomore, Edgar Nuggets. So, wow. Same guy who had the interception in the first half. We'll see that hit tonight at 10 on KU if you missed it. Uh, due to technical difficulties here on the broadcast. He's having a tough game. Abercrombie says, give it to me. And he takes the rock and runs across the 40. That's a hard downhill runner there, Jeff. Really nice control, body-wise and with the football. Yeah, so <laughs> this is three plays in a row. I mentioned the same thing. But when defenders are taught to drive your feet on contact, we think of that as a, a linebacker thing, but the better running backs do the same exact thing. And that's what we saw Jamal do at the end of that run. Right when there's contact, right when that collision happens, drive your feet. We're going to finish on my side of the line of script. We're going to finish on my side of the contact. Win to Bradley. Bradley dragged down by a trio of Raiders. 224 left here in this third quarter. You're just joining us, Raiders leading the Cougars 22 to 14. And Jeff, to the booth, to our right near the broadcast the press box. It's the belt coaching staff. Belt yeah. undefeated 5 0. You're scouting these two district opponents. You know, they were on the field this time last week uh, playing against Pflugerville. That game was extremely close until there were about two minutes left. So that's a good team, uh, but they can be good. Second down and five. Abercrombie right up the middle. Stiff arm keeps his feet moving inside the 10. Didn't want to 
to get taken down. He had the end zone in his sights. Flag on the play, though. We'll see what the call is. Looked like there could have been really ugly face mask there. Not sure that was the call, but from this vantage point, that's what it looked like to me. Man, that's a nice So much space. Probably a face mask. Yep, Jeff, you saw it. That vision, despite one year older. You wanted to say, despite my old age. I felt like that those words almost came out. I appreciate you you're not saying that. Certainly a better person is a lot of Two yards to go for Conley. They bunch up. Little tush push. Little tush push. And does the tush get pushed across the goal line? Oh, Raiders say they have the football. Oh, but we'll no, wait and see. That's, that's not what the officials are saying, though. No, I see the official on the far side has his hand up. He's spotting this thing at about the three-inch line. Did you see the tush push part two? So that was Glenn just taking the snap and pushing forward. Remind you, I caught the tush push, remind you of what the Philadelphia Eagles have done so well over the past two seasons. Just getting those yard or two whenever they want. Wynn keeps it again. How about the Raiders defensive line seeping through Jacob Carruthers, Aaron Bolenbaugh, Braden Everline up front, and they say, not today. Hey, Rob. And my thing is, if, if your quarterback's going to run the ball, get up there and do exactly what you did on first down. Do that again. Just line up under center, have everybody push them. Don't snap it in the shotgun and make your quarterback gain four yards to gain one yard. Just make him gain that one yard. Preston Welton, Hunter Simpson in that play as well for the Rouse defense. Nine seconds left here in the third quarter. Third down and three from the three. Will we wait and see if Conley will let the quarter end? And that's exactly what they do. We've played three here at the field. Raiders of Rouse leading the Cougars of Connolly. 22 to 14, 12 minutes left to see how this ball game ends. You are streaming live on KV Plus and our KV YouTube channel. Friday Football Fever on Thursday. We'll be right back. was there on the coverage for Rouse. We'll wait and see what the call is, Jeff. Yeah, he shot, and so am I. I didn't, I didn't think I saw any interference there, if that's what the call is going to be. I tell you what, I did see that kind of confused me. Maybe Corey can help us get a shot of this. The far side still has a three on the uh, down marker, and it's been one... It's been one where they just switch it to one. It had been one down behind this entire drive. So first down red one, second down red one, third down red two, fourth down red three. And I wonder if the sideline was reading that marker or if they were keeping up with it on their own. Either way, that's a big mistake that could have played into the decision. No time for all the block that we played two here. It goes now. Touch push again from the two. Looks like Connolly is still slightly short of that end zone. <laughs> this is, they just want to put it in, or what are they waiting for? Credit to the Rouse defense for sure. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about the play calling around around this area right now? I, honestly, what I would do, that was first down, I'd run the same thing on second down and the same thing on third down. Here we go. Here's one 
again. Takes a snap, pushes forward, and he's in. Yeah. That's a touchdown. Oh, nice now here's the question. The Cougars get the touchdown. You got to go for two, right? Definitely. Definitely. Tie this thing up right now. Uh, that kind of makes the decision a little hard. Yeah, you don't like to see a young man stumbling around like that. I don't know what was kind of banged up on him, and that's your, that's your quarterback. As you can see, the situation right there. Fourth quarter just started. Connolly scored. They are down two, going for the two-point conversion. Let's see if Caden Wynn is healthy enough, mobile enough. He looks good. They got two receivers left side. Little trickeration. Oh, and he gets met. Nico Fisher caught his catch of the day. Stuffed. It'll remain a two point ball game. Raiders up 22 to 20. Cougars chip away. They just couldn't get that two point conversion. I was extremely impressed by the Rouse defense there. Let's see. They just played. Is that six plays from within inside the three-yard line yeah. and then shut down a yes. two-point conversion? That's extremely impressive. Even though you see the touchdown on the board there, um, that's just a great state, I say in quotation marks, because they did give up the six points. But that, that was just impressive. You made him earn it. Senior linebacker Nico Fisher with the stop there on that two-point conversion. They keep the Raiders out in front. Fisher, team best 12.8 tackles per game. He's got a sack, two tackle for loss, 51 total tackles, 30 solos. So that's a guy who knows how to get it done at that position, and he's been doing it really well for Rouse over the course of his career. 11-17 left in this ball game. Rouse leading. Connolly, 22 to 20 on the road tonight. Thursday night football. We love it here in Central Texas. So glad you're with us on either KU Plus or our KU YouTube channel. Yeah, look at Caden Wynn on the sideline there. I was a little concerned about his health, but he seems to be healthy and in good spirits. So that's good news for any Connolly fans out there. Caden, looking good. A lot of kicks it off. Fair catch. Let's it run to the end zone. Keller Rogers, the Rocket. See what Rouse could do. Take some time off the clock, maybe find the end zone, or can Connolly's defense hold it? Credit both of these teams. I mean, this has been a battle, Jeff. This yeah. is what you come to expect in district play. Yeah, this is a district matchup. It's what we expect from district play, yes, but not necessarily what we've expected from this district matchup. As we said uh, earlier in the broadcast, Rouse has won this matchup six times in a row. Um, Conley went 0-10 last year. This is a huge step in the right direction for the Cougars, who lost to Rouse by 20 last season. London sweeps it to Cannon. Fires up field for about six or seven yards. And you know, Tyler, I'm up here talking about huge steps in the right direction, how great this is to be down to. I'm almost giving them a moral victory right now. You know, not doing that are the guys on the home sideline wearing green and black. They just want a straight up victory. They want to move their overall record to three and three. And they're in a position to maybe make that happen. Cannon back with the football. Got an injured player on the field. Gaines Spell with the stop on that play. An official timeout, injured player. We inch closer. That's Chase Famadu, the senior, number wearing number 77. He hobbles off to the Rouse sideline. Famine who credited with six pancake blocks so far this season. Oh, I love a high school team that keeps pancakes as a staff. Tyra Barsky, we talked about him earlier mm -hmm. and that message that he wanted to relay for the theme of this season for Rouse. He leads the team with 14 pancake blocks. All right, Tyler, pancakes, French toast, waffles. Which one is the first one on your breakfast plate? Oh, I love breakfast. French toast, probably number one, but I love all three. wonder what London loves. He loves a screen pass. Not around the 
39 yard line. Bangers and Bash, is that a Deshaun Dole? Is that a London thing? It is Irish. Irish, okay. I've had okay. a nice plate of Bangers and Bash. Yeah. Okay. 70. That was Benjamin Wilwright, the junior right guard who we saw whose helmet came off. You know, he came in for Jace, who just stepped away uh, after being rolled up on or briefly injured. He's already back on the field. But how's that for a welcome to the game? You know, first snap on offense, and somebody's in there giving you the business, ripping your helmet off. Yeah, so Wilwright, his helmet went wrong, and now <laughs> Jace Family was back on the field already. First down and 10 on the 35 yard line. Ten minutes to go here in this ball game. Raiders leading 22 to 20. This has been a great ball game here at the field. That noon. I and Scott, if you're streaming us, take your stream outside and look up. <laughs> down and 10 from the 47 cannon gets the handoff cuts out cuts in and then pile drives across the 35 to around the 33 yard line he is a hard runner and boy oh boy that was a hit from cannon get out of his way first and 10 from the 35 under 10 minutes to go here This time, it goes to Anthony Reyes, and Reyes gets a few yards. He has some good vision there. He had the, uh, uh, he, he cut it back, but not all the way back, so he kind of just bent it back a little bit. It was supposed to hit C gap. He ended up in about B. Uh, and that was just a nice run. Way to take what they give you. Seven yards on first game. That is definitely a win. Reyes getting some more action, giving some rest to Cannon, and he keeps the feet moving. Wow. And look at that, spins right into the end zone. The sophomore, stupendous. 24, the touchdown for the Raiders. Yeah, he just refused to give up on that play. That was awesome. I, I was already looking down, trying to get a, a number for the defender, and I was going to tell him, you know, you got to keep your feet moving on contact. He delivered a great blow, but didn't keep his feet moving. It looks like he didn't keep his arms wrapped there either, obviously. Reyes came into this game with two touchdowns on the ground. That makes three. And only a sophomore, so when you see a guy like that run that tough and break those kinds of tackles, Joshua Mann saying to himself and his coaches that that's Yeah, and you see Coach Mann looking happy right there because he looks up at the scoreboard and he sees, okay, it's a two-possession game that's good. If our defense can get the ball back, I think maybe the offense can have another long, sustained drive. But we're closer to the end of the last than we were a moment ago, that's for sure. Uh, this thing is a two-game game. It is now 29 to 20. Rouse leading Connolly with nine minutes and 12 seconds left. And for Coach Joshua Mann, he's been the head coach at Rouse for all 16 seasons. Mm -hmm. he, he started this program from the ground up. A lot of people told him they were in his ear saying, hey, if you take this job, hey, it could be a death sentence for you as a head coach. He said, nah. And he took it head on, and look at him now. One of the longest tenured coaches in Central Texas. From a death sentence to breathing life into this program, and you know, so many times you think about head football coaches having to surround themselves with good football assistants. Well, he's done that, but he's also surrounded himself with other good head coaches on Rouse's campus. He told us that the cross country coach, the volleyball coach, the boys basketball, and the girls basketball coach have all also been there for 16 seasons. So a lot of people who are really invested in that part of the Yander and, and the community and what happens on the Rouse campus. Yeah, talking with Coach Mann earlier this week, he stressed the importance of community. And I think in a day and age where people are so quick to look for the next best thing, you build a home. You build a home. And you also build a way to show off some fashion, check out those white Nikes with the maroon stripes. His son, Johnson Man, the fashionista of, hey, Dad, maybe you want to look a little bit more aggressive on the sideline. Coach Man actually told us, 
he had his way, he'd find a comfortable pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> but the Nikes are just a little bit more applicable to a football field on turf. Yeah, Jetson is the guy who, what, as we see another flag hit the ground, Jetson is the guy who calls the fashion shots on the sideline, then calls the coverages on the field. One of the smarter guys on the team. And we'll see um, if he can make some plays as the Raiders are back on defense trying to shut Connolly down. Flags have been a storyline. There have been a lot of them. I wish I, I've kept a tally, but I haven't. I can't count that high to begin with, Jeff, so I'm glad I have. <laughs> yeah. Corey Moe is doing a great job of showing this Jets man. Number two was on your screen right there a moment ago. Look at him. Look at the safety pressed up on their number one receiver. That's not something you usually see. Oh, that's why the safety blitz is coming off the edge. Good coverage. Pass gets off, and he gets mad. Oh, man. Oh, a little, a little posturing at their sideline. Was that Nico Fisher? The same young man who made that stop on the, on the two-point conversion, just made a big TFL, big tackle for loss there. And wanted to make sure everybody on the Bloomerville Connolly sideline knows that that was him. Nico's all over the place right now for the Raiders. Second down and 15 for the 20. 840 to go in this ball game. Win drops back, steps up. Avoids the pressure, tucks it, and then gets met hard at the 22-yard line. Preston Welton, another senior linebacker, Welton and Fisher. Yep. You do not want to meet the Welton and Fisher attorneys at law. <laughs> Whatever firm they're working for in the middle of the field right there, dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. defense attorneys for sure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Without a doubt. 11 and a half tackles a game for Preston, and that's going to be one of the more memorable ones. Great job in space, great impact on the quarterback, you know, being able to hit the guys who don't always get hit. I like a lot about that one. Third down and 12, screen pass to Abercrombia, and Abercrombia runs out of bounds at around the 32 yard line. Ooh, yeah, I, okay, I think you go for this. Down nine, 29 20, Cougars trailing the Raiders. Yeah, you just don't know when or if you're going to get the ball back, so make the most of your opportunities. Now, I'd say leave the offense on the field, but as I say that, special teams unit comes out. So what are we looking at here, Tyler? Around fourth and two, around what, 36 or so? Looks like the 33. And Jeff, with the clock running, we're now at seven minutes. Two possession ball game. I guess, I guess this is what... Coach Burton thought was best for the team, but hey, maybe they want to make it. Well, but here's the timeout. Coach Burton just called a timeout. So, so let's yeah. talk about it. I, look, I, I think down nine, you've played so hard in this football game. No wins a season ago, obviously, first-year head coach, but he's not a first-year head coach. He's done this before. I yeah. wonder what, what do you think he's saying or his assistants are saying to the team right now? Well, <laughs> you see him he, walk just, he just walked away <laughs> with a very confident look on his face, though. And then I just saw what looked like some of the special teams guys walking away from the huddle. I think he said, let's go for it. You know, we're going to get the offense on the field right now, which you have to yeah. do. It's a two-possession game. You need to get these three yards. Your offense has looked pretty good this second half. Go get these three yards. Go get some points. Whatever comes to you after that. It doesn't matter if it's three or if it's seven. But go get some points on this drive. Defense, I need a three and out. Offense. We're going to go win the game. You're going to get points on this drive, three and out, go win the game. That's what I'm telling my team right now. That's the plan. That's the only one that works for me right now. And it doesn't work when the special teams unit is on the field. Get them off. Get my studs on. Let's go be students. A field goal is not going to win the game. Neither is a punt. 7 3 left. That's just simple math, Jeff. Mm -hmm. After watching that Steelers Raiders game last week. With Josh McDaniel. Yeah, yeah, you know, hey, what do you call it, a bad, a written addition? Conley's going for it. Here's Wynn, QB keeper, and I think he got enough. Easy. Easy. Good blocking up front, found a hole. Ooh. That looks like Nico Fisher on the ground. They're definitely him, not what we want to see. Can't quite tell what part of his body was hurt. Nurse it looks like upper body. I don't know if that's ribs, if that's shoulder, if that's elbow. Well, it looks like 
you know, I have the feet up here, and it's a little bit delayed. Uh huh. Wynn drove that helmet right at the diaphragm, so maybe lost his breath. Let's yeah, because he's let's walking, he's walking yeah. fine now. Okay. Nice. Percussion. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Maybe just got the wind knocked out of him briefly. And you know, he's a key part of this defense. We've caught his name a whole lot over the past few minutes. So, you know, we're hoping that he's healthy just because he's a young man. We don't want to see him injured. But we're also hoping that he's healthy because regardless of who wins this game, you want them to win or lose with their best players in the field. And Nico Fisher, definitely one of those players for us. So it's first down and 10 from Conley's own 36-yard line. 6.40 left in this ball game. They're down nine points at a certain point. A little bit of hurry up will be necessary for these Cougars. Here's Wynn. Looks sideline. Nice coverage there by Aiden Brink, the senior. But pretty much Wynn, that's, that's the only place he looked. Yeah, and you know, they're, they're blitzing these safeties. I saw uh, Jensen Mann come on a blitz off the other side this time, so the, the bottom side of your screen. They're blitzing these safeties, and the safeties who are not coming are staying pretty flat-footed at the 10-yard line. What that's telling me is they are not, not afraid at all of the deep ball. And so I don't know if it's a, uh, like, a fake the screen and you throw it deep. There's got to be something that reminds this defense that the deep ball is a threat, because right now they don't respect it. Abercrombie always a threat. Finds his seam. Look at that breakaway speed. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Jamo Abercrombie. End zone visit. And we've got ourselves a ball game once again. That looked just like our little handshake, Tyler. Hey, probably learns from the best. <laughs> I bet he does. How silly do I feel right now saying Conley has to threaten him with the deep ball? If you have a running back like that, why not just let him do what he does and have to put points on the scoreboard? Conley's going to go ahead and kick this field on this extra point right here to make it a two-point game. And it is good. Ooh, barely. Barely. Aaron Alade just gets it over that crossbar. Hey, Jeff, you make the Rouse defense think deep ball, and then you give him the run, and then you see Abercrombie and Sizzle. Oh, wow. Wait, so are you, are you trying to give me credit for that score? Because I'll definitely take it. Hey, I'll give you all the credit you deserve. You Thank deserve you. a ton of credit. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great play by maybe the best player we've seen tonight. We've seen some plays made, especially by the Rouse defense, but Jamal and Crumbie are just, every time they need a response, he's there. It's not always in a big explosive run like what we just saw, but he's he's shown up time and time again in this game. That young man is one of the better running backs in the area. So it's 29-27 now. Back to a two-point ball game. Cougars trailing Raiders with 6.15 left to go here at the field. Beautiful night in Pflugerville. We appreciate you joining us here on either KU Plus or our KU YouTube channel. Tyler Feldman, Jeff Jones, Corey Mose, Yohan Castro, handling all the difficulties we've had to incur during the earlier parts of this broadcast. We appreciate you sticking with us, though, because we've got a great ball game. Onside kick, and it's nearly oh. recovered. So close. A little too much heat. So close. Diving forward and nearly grabbing that football. Owen Garcia, Aaron Alade, clearly they practiced that and nearly, nearly caught the Raiders by surprise. Coach Burton trying to put on a coaching clinic right now. We are just watching it firsthand. I'm loving what I'm seeing, the aggressive play calling. We talked about it at the beginning of the half. A close game in the second half. Favors the underdog every single time. You put that underdog at home, it favors me even more. Connelly. Very interesting team, very interesting to watch. I want to go ahead and read this off, Tyler, and I'm going to stop when the play starts so you can uh, do your thing. But this is the margin of defeat in district for Conley last year. Lost by 22, lost by 20, lost by 22, forfeit, lost by 71, lost by 20. There were no close games in district last year, and right now it looks like they can upset a playoff team from a year ago if a few things break their direction in the final 6-15 of this game. Drastic, drastic improvement. 
it goes Charles Burns first. I mean, look, you, you look at the way in which the series has gone, we've talked about it. Six straight wins for Rouse over Conley. The only win for the Cougars in this series back in 2016, it was a 20 to 19 ball game. I think a year ago, Jeff, we saw it. I mean, you look at this game a year ago, it was a 20 point ball game, a 20 point win for Rouse. This is a change program, and you can see the steps with this Cougars team here tonight. They've already got two wins, two more than last year, and then they're competing against the district foe. Coach Burton's got something brewing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't know what's going to happen in this game. But something tells me this won't be the last opportunity that, that Connolly has to, to win a close game this season. And that's a huge upgrade from last year. Well, Morgan London hands it off to Justin Cannon. And Cannon shoots and scores. Anything you can do, Abercrombie, I can do better. That's what Justin Cannon's saying right now. Holy cow. Talk about speed on display tonight, especially in the last minute. Between Abercrombie and Cannon, we've got two star running backs. 54 yard sprint after the cut just after the line of scrimmage. Very impressive. Now, if you're Connolly, you've got to put everything you can into blocking this kick. It's an eight point game right now. If it's a nine point game, it's another two possession game. That's what it is. Nine points. Justin Tatum with the extra point, a critical extra point, makes it a 36-27 lead for Rouse over Conley. So just when you thought Conley was back into it, nearly recovering an onside kick, Rouse quickly changes the direction of this ball game. Justin Cannon shoots, and he just spreads down the field. He's certainly been my guy for this game, the way in which Cannon has run the football. Yeah, very impressive, very impressive. And I know I've said it a few times, but you know, we've known who he is, but he's done this multiple times over the course of multiple years. Um, and so it's really not a surprise at all, just kind of confirms he's still that good. So 529, we'll see if Conley has a little bit more magic in their hat of tricks. 36-27 lead. Connor Lyons just kicks it high into the sky. Their catch. Conley will take over. Trailing by nine. Coach Mann telling us earlier this week one of the keys to his coaching success at Rouse has been building relationships. I think everyone builds relationships differently, but the way in which he doesn't want to just be a coach. He wants to be a father figure. He wants to teach more than just football. He wants to teach life, and I think that's helped him connect with his kids through the years. Yeah, that combined with brutal honesty about what's going on in his life. Great run after the catch. Oh, for to see him. Yeah. Yeah. He has really been a playmaker tonight for Conley. But, Jeff, to your point, Coach Mann's mother here tonight, despite battling stage for breast cancer. Yeah, it's an experience that you know he and his family are going through. He says he shares that kind of stuff with his team because that's real life. You're going to face adversity, and some of it is going to be harder than others. Uh, but you have to be able to lean on the people you care about. Wow, Ola Garcia had a great play. You have to be able to lean on the people you care about in your time of need and trust them uh, with details, even painful details sometimes. So he does not hide that from his team. He said it's allowed him to grow closer to them. Some of them experiencing uh, similar things in their families right now. Trips right for the Cougars. Some great plays through the air from Wynn to Garcia. Now they hand it off to Abercrombie. Less than five minutes to go. In this ball game, Cougars trailing by nine. We'll see if they can manufacture another touchdown. Left. The Cougars were a 
black with the green trim. Rouse wearing the white tops and black bottoms. Here's Wayne. Looks for Bradley. Fires a bullet and it's caught. That's a perfect pass play for the touchdown. 21 yards. And once again, oh man, Jeff, this is exciting. That's one heck of a play. Yeah, that throw was impressive. I'm not going to call it the best throw I've seen this high school season, but maybe the most clutch throw I've seen this high school season. Conley needed to get in the end zone, and they needed to do it pretty quickly. That throw was open. It was it was a hole in a cover two, it looked like to me, where the receiver was behind the corner but in front of the safety. That, that's only open for a split second. But uh, he found the second it was open and put it down. The extra point does go through. This game is 36 34. Rouse Conley about to take the ball off. Two routes with 417 left. Olade makes it a two point ball game again. But now, Jeff, it's time for the Cougars to hold defensively. You can't let Justin Cannon do what he did last drive because with 417 to go, at a certain point, you've got to get a stop. And honestly, like as a defender, you don't ever want to give up a long touchdown. But if it's a long touchdown run like we just saw, at least you can huddle up and you can say, hey, we had one guy misfit on that play. And our guy, let's call him Bobby. Bobby knows how to do it. We've seen Bobby do it in practice. We've seen Bobby do it in this game. Bobby can do it. If we make that one play, we shut him down. Let's make that one play. Next time it's going to be on you, whoever you are. Make that play be in your spot. And so I think, I think it's easier as a group to regroup when you can say it was just one missed assignment. We were one missed assignment away from having the lead in this game right now. Let's go get it. They're going onside kick. I don't know who Bobby is, Jeff, but I appreciate the coach. 417. Onside kick again for Conley. This time it's it's organized. I skip it. Oh! Landon Bradley gets it. That's unbelievable. Bobby's off the hook. He oh! doesn't have to on the field. Who needs a Bobby when you've got a Landon Bradley? That was unbelievable. Perfectly positioned by Aaron Alade. Perfect kick up over that first line of Rouse's specialties. And then Landon Bradley right there. Incredible. That was Incredible. crazy. That is when you practice onside kicks in practice, they never work out that well. I'm certain they practiced this a million times this year, and none of them have worked out as well as they just worked out right there. So impressive. And now they get the ball on the side of the 50 that they want to be on. Four seventeen away from doing something cool. If they can score points. First down and ten, trips right, and we've got a flag. Yeah, their best they offensive whistles. lineman. That was uh Hayden Nubo Nubio. Uh, just landing back in a stance. 6'8", 280. That's a lot to keep in one place leading up to the second. Coach Charles Burton telling us this Aiden Newbill kid, well, if you look at him and you stand in front of him, you might think he's not a kid. 6'8", 280. He put on 50 pounds, Coach Burton said this past offseason. Significant, high ceiling guy. Should be a D1 kid. We'll see what transpires as the course of the season goes Significant weight gain, significant grocery deal at the Newbill household. I can tell you that. Been on 50 pounds. Not easy. First and 15 from the 49. Garcia on the end around. Gets about four or five yards back to the line of scrimmage. Four minutes to go. It's a 36 34 lead for Rouse over Connolly. District showdown here at the field on this Thursday night in Pflugerville. As this game goes along, the full moon just gets higher and higher in the sky. And we're getting higher and higher with excitement here oh, in the press man, box. I'm glad you said with excitement there. Yeah, I was like, where is he going with this? Second down 11 from the 44-yard line. 3.30 left to go. Win. To Garcia. Garcia cuts in, oh, cuts out. Move. Has speed. One more man to beat. Pushes him down inside the 20. Garcia, unsung hero, certainly for this Connolly team throughout this ball game, just making those big splash plays when the offense needs it. For offensive guys, when you see that sideline, it gets a little scary. It's like a 12th defender out there. So when you see that sideline, you want to make the defense forget that sideline is there, which Owen did on that right after catch, but we cannot forget how many flags we've seen on the field. A holding on that play is going to bring this one all the way back. I've got to sit down. Take a moment. Another flag. Yep. Another flag. My yep. legs are tired from all these flags. <laughs> I 
I'm surprised the whistles still work for these referees. Some RDLs. So many times they've had to bend over to pick up their flag. Hmm. Romanian deadlifts. Well, hamstring, glute, maybe lower back exercise there. <laughs> Anything to be able to grab that flag easier. Second down and 11 now. From their own 48. Little reverse. Out of the Mishap on the transition. Garcia able to fall on it. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't mind the play call there, trying to get uh, Owen Garcia in open space again. He's been one of the better players on the field tonight. You put the ball in the hands of your best player to try to draw the defense in one direction and send another guy in the opposite direction. I, I like the, the thought there. It just did not work out. The execution was not on the point. So it's third down and 24 from the 43. Cooper's trailing by two with two and a half minutes to go. It's Burton was pretty bombastic off his sideline. Here we go from the shotgun. Win fires deep, and it is nearly intercepted. Too much on that one for Gael Paez Vera, the senior they called Tiny. Almost made a huge play. The clock's going to stop right there at 2.20. The clock hasn't really been working for or against anyone. Uh, but I mean, 4th and 24 here. There's nothing really in the playbook for this down the distance. So you just have to throw one up and hope something special happens. If not, then you economy have two timeouts left, so you just have to uh, hope that those plays work out for you. If you can get the ball back and have another chance to lob one or two up. Fingers crossed. Costly Cody penalty. Wreaking some havoc, unfortunately, for the Cougars. Time out on the field, and both teams will talk things over. I did not see who called that time out. That definitely matters. Time out called. But the reps never indicated that the PA announcer here at the field of Pflugerville doesn't know. The school board operator doesn't know. No, oh, the timeouts are still on the board. Looks like the Raiders called the timeout. Oh, there we go. Okay, we just got to figure it out. All right, all right. Coach Mann talking things over. Jeff, fourth down and 24, you said it. There's really nothing in the playbook for this down and distance. Tyler, are you old enough to remember a game called NFL Blitz? <laughs> Jeff, I might not be celebrating my 35th birthday tonight throughout this day, but I remember the game. Mm -hmm. so they had a play in that game called the ball. Mm -hmm. the, the ball band. was the, the best right long <laughs> distance play. So 4th and 24, I'm dialing up the ball. For those of you who didn't play in the field, you're wondering what that is. It's uh, trips on one side, one receiver spread out to the right. I usually go trips to the left here. You're two outside guys. <laughs> Go. It's a sprint to the end zone. Whoever gets there first might get the ball, but your first read is actually that inside receiver on the left. Mm -hmm. And so I and that's that's the that's the ball. That's the ball. That's the ball. So yeah, that's that's what I would draw up right here on fourth and twenty-four. The ball. It is nine thirty-nine local time again. Don't forget to check out KVU News at ten. And Sports around 10:20 for highlights from this game, as well as Texas football preview against Kansas tomorrow afternoon. By tomorrow, I mean two days from now. Fourth down and 24. Here's Witt. Fires deep for Landon Bradlin. Nearly had it. Yeah, it was close. It was close. It was there. He's the guy who grabbed that onside kick. So you want to just line it up? Say, hey, I know it's your night, but is it really, really your night? It might still be. He really did, didn't he? <laughs> Coach Burton, if you're listening live to our stream right now, I appreciate that nod to the KU sports team by running the ball. I'm Thank sure. You, sir. I'm sure that's exactly why he called that play. Coach, if you're listening to us, keep your hands on your hips. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's listening to us. Well, clearly he is, because he just signaled that he's not. He's, he's coaching us up right now. So 2-12, Jeff, I, hey, that onside kick, I, I think you hate that it, it led to nothing. And here's Cannon okay, again, in, out, so smooth. Look at that stutter step. 
This guy can run. Yeah. We've seen it all night. <laughs> you get that first down, they're going to get things set. The play clock will start. Uh, two minutes left. Two timeouts. I mean, you just need two huge stops for a, a, a mistake, possibly. Hope for a mistake on the Rouse offense. Yeah, as you guys can see right now, you're seeing the clock is moving, so we're under two minutes left. We're about 20 on the play clock, so they probably won't snap this until about a buck 30 left. The time is not on the side of the group. Colony Coopers. First down at 10, back to Cannon and Cannon. We'll go down around the 26 yard line. Minute 30 left. Cougars will use their second to last timeout. That'll stop the clock at 129. At this point, it looks like Rouse will get its first district win of the season and improve to 4 1 overall. Conley, meanwhile, on the verge of falling to 0-2 in district play, 2-4 overall. Another close loss on tap here for the Cougars who really have battled hard all night to stay in this ball game. Yeah, it's been a really, really hard fought game, as you just mentioned, Tyler, and the effort and the execution, I gotta say, for most of this fourth quarter is really what I'm going to remember about this game, uh, especially the fact that they got with that onside kick and were able to pull that off. These kids are playing hard. And that's one thing that we told you about earlier is that they believe. Coach Burton told us uh, that that was his first duty. When he got the job in January, he wanted to change the culture immediately and make them believe. You can tell by the way they're playing right now. They absolutely believe. 36-34, Rouse in front looking to ice this ball game. Great play. Back to Cannon. Oh, wow. How about that defensively? OJ, Guzman, Jabate. Been practicing that one all week. Big stop in the backfield. Final timeout called by the Cougars. It'll be third down and six with a minute 24 left. So, Jeff, yep. huge play. I mean, this yep. is the deciding play in this ballgame. Yeah, so third and six right here. And I imagine they'll run the ball because Rouse knows that Conley has no timeout, so they want as much time to run off that clock as possible. So let's say uh, they run the ball. Let's say the play takes eight seconds. And that's like a long run play if it stops short of that six yards to gain. Uh, so we'll pick things up at about 116. They'll let all 40 seconds go off the clock. Might kick a field goal after that. And so I can see Conley getting the ball back with maybe like 30 seconds left, something like that, after the field goal and after the change of possession. So we'll see. We'll see. Yes, we will. This has turned into quite the ball game. Love me some high school football on Thursday night. Third down and six. From the 28. London in the shotgun. Hands it off. Oh, that's a play to me. To Cannon. And Cannon cuts outside and then gets dragged down inbounds inside the 15 yard line for a first down. Jeff. Yeah. What are you thinking? I think a Will linebacker, Alvaro Ruiz, is really kicking himself right now. He came off the edge and had a chance to make the play in the backfield. The thing is, we talked about upfield shoulders. You have to get to the shoulder that's closest to the other end zone. And if you miss that way, at least you turn it back in. We have 10 more dudes wearing your color come. At the point of the field where he was, you don't want to release that guy to the sideline because that will happen. Yeah, it's close. It was close. These guys from Conley really fought hard. And they should be proud. Uh, but they're not going to walk away with a win tonight. It'll be Rouse. Next up for Conley, who drops to 2 and 4. 0 oh and 2 in district play. They travel to Belton. Undefeated Belton. That'll be a tough one for the Cougars. Meanwhile, Check it out, Rouse's upcoming schedule. Now 4-1, 1-0 in district play next week. Next week, it'll be Rouse 
36-34 to get their first district win. Rouse, 36. Connolly, 34. Jeff, final thoughts on what we saw here tonight. Hey, great job to Rouse. You know, they had a uh, running back, uh, Cannon. Looked like he was shot out of Cannon all night. He made the plays to end the game. That 54-yard touchdown and that play on 36 that really sealed it. So great job to Rouse. But I really just have to shout out Connolly. It had been 692 days since their last district win. All of their district losses last year came by 20 or more points, some by over 70. And tonight, they had the ball on the right side of the field, down two with a chance to win, with two minutes left in this, well, with two and a half minutes left in this game. A lot to be proud about. The future is bright. Coach Charles Burton has this Connolly team pointed in the right direction. One reminder. Coming up, 10 o'clock, KVU News at 10. 10.20, Jeff will have your highlights from this game. We appreciate you sticking with us throughout our technical difficulties early on during the first half of this broadcast. Once again, the final score here, 36-34. Rouse beats Connolly for a seventh consecutive season. For Corey Mose, Johan Castro, Jeff Jones, I'm Tyler Feldman saying so long from the field here in beautiful Pflugerville. We'll see you next week for some more Friday Football Fever on Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow for week six of Friday Football Fever on KVU. Have a great night, everyone.